All right, guys. I'm out here today working on my car. My dang Subaru broke down on me. Uh, when you drive a $200 car, and it's a 2000 model, 22 years old, you're going to have to work on it. I can do that, or I can pay $500 a month for some piece of crap that I still got to work on. So, when she breaks, I fix her. And I got a valve guide dropped, and it don't have any compression on the passenger side rear cylinder. So, I got kind of upset because I, I just had the engine out not too long back doing some clutch work. And, you know, put new antifreeze and everything in it. And now i got to take it back out again. But, it has to be done. But uh, I'm about to put it on a stand. I'm going to take this head off. Y'all come with me. I've got my Jeep stroker motor on this engine stand. I've been working on it for a while. I haven't been able to finish it. I haven't been able to focus any of my time on it. But uh, I'm planning on it. But man, this thing is beast mode. But we got our mount off. That's what I was after. I'm going to put this on my Subaru engine. I don't want to take that off. It looks like I'm going to have to take his clutch off. It's always something if it ain't something else. There we go. It's always something if it ain't something else. Look at that glaze on that clutch. On that flywheel. Hmm. Glazed up, boys. Maybe you could do your hair in there. Those little bolts that held the engine in the car. Hopefully, that'll be what I need. These are the bolts that hold the transmission bell housing to the end to the block. Let's see if I can find a little shorter one. Yeah. Try that with a small block Chevy. Your Camaro engine ain't gonna be that easy. Let's flip this up and I'll show y'all. Let's actually I need to drain the oil out of it. Keep everything in order. Gotta get the oil out of it. We can only do that, but it hasn't been All right, let's get this timing cover off here. This thing just pulls off by hand. If it's on there a little tight and you think you need to pull it, you don't. Just keep wiggling. Maybe tap it with a little hammer or something if you need to, but you gotta be careful to kind of brittle or break. But this thing should just come off by hand like that, no problem. It's gotta be really tight when you put it back on. Get this timing cover off. Most of these are 10 millimeter, and they're all they're all pretty much the same. They're two different kind of bolts that go on the timing covers. One of them don't have a shoulder, and the other one does. There's about four or five of these, and about 10 or 12 of those. I don't know exactly. They're all a little bit different. I just know this one's so good because I've done it so many times. Most of all the problems I've ever had out of this car, I caused them myself. By doing something stupid, or just 
lacking the money to be able to do the job right the first time. So just doing it as best I can and getting by. And that's costing me having to go back in a couple times. But sometimes when you're broke, you got to do what you got to do. I've learned that in life. And a lot of people are going to learn that here pretty soon, the way inflation is. People going to learn. I always like to set this timing right, get this up here and this up here and this up here before I take everything apart. That way I'm not starting to guess a lot whenever I go back together. Get our 22, whichever one. Just set that timing where it goes. I've already got my mark smart. All right. Take a 14 millimeter and take this tensioner off. That's the way you do it. Tensioner comes off first. Okay, there's a washer and then there's an O-ring back in. Can y'all see that? You can't even see it. I'm here and talking to you. You can't even see it. <sighs> Mental. Anyway, see that what see that rubber O-ring? It keeps that washer on. So when you go to put this back in, it's the last piece you put back in on your timing. That washer don't fall off. You got to take this and put it in a vise and crush it down and put a pin through it. I'll take it to work and do that tomorrow and get it ready. But it's pretty strong hydraulic cylinder right there. You got to push it down with a vise, put a pin through it, and hold it. As you can see, my belt's fairly new. Still got the marks on it. I haven't been that long since I put one on it. probably replace that pulley it don't sound that good that one feels good all the rest of these are fairly new there's a piece of plastic right here that goes in between this cylinder head and here and i found in the past anytime i haven't taken it off and it ends up breaking when i try to take the head off something gets caught on it and it breaks so best thing to do pull this bolt off pull this uh, pulley off put this bolt back in here so you don't lose it and pop off this cover. Now, when you put this cover back on, it's imperative that you use these bolts in this cover. I'm going to tell you why. This thing bent all the valves, broke down and bent all the valves a while back because I put the wrong bolt in this hole and this pulley bolted down against it. And this little pulley wasn't turning for 20,000 miles. It went 20,000 miles without that pulley turning at all. But this pulley just barely touches that belt. So I had to take it apart and fix it and put valves in it because it bent all the valves and broke the belt. I learned a really hard lesson in using the right bolts in the right spots on a Subaru. So y'all can learn from me. If you're doing this job, I don't care if you think you're good at Subarus or not. These bolts matter. If you go trying to find any other kind of bolt and put in this hole and it sticks out even a millimeter more than that, when you bolt this pulley down, it'll bolt down on that and it won't turn. And you'll be shit out of luck. Trust me. the valve cover off. Now these seals right here are bad about leaking and a lot of times valve cover gasket sets don't come in them. The new Felpro stuff has been coming with them a little bit more. So keep that in mind if you go take this off and these are hard. See, mine are still soft and flexible because they're kind of newer. If you take one off that's got 50,000 miles on it, it'll be so hard if you just do that, it'll just break. And you got to get new ones or it'll leak like hell and it'll have oil all up inside your spark plug tubes. Remember that. Get this. All right. That's pretty good. Let me get a flashlight. Oh, yeah, you can see. All right. See that valve guide right there? That valve guide's okay. That valve guy is one of the exhaust valves on this cylinder. And it's fine. You can see it up in there. If you look, it's sticking out just a little bit. That's normal. All right, now I want you to look at this other valve guide. I'm going to move the camera a little bit. Look at that baby right there. Oh, yeah, there's a good, there's a good view. Let me zoom in. So that valve guide is nowhere near like that other one. It's sticking way out. And you can see that exhaust valve's open up in there. See that gap up in there where the exhaust valve's open? 
that valve guide has come down out of the head. It's got hot, it's stuck on the valve, and the valve's pulled it down out of the head where it was hot. Too hot. So I gotta replace that valve guide. So I gotta get the head off to do it. That's what we're doing now. All right, since I'm, since I'm just taking and doing a valve guide and I'm not doing a whole head job, I'm not gonna take this plate right here off. Cause you gotta RTV this back down. I think I can do it without taking this off. I'm gonna pull off these rocker shafts and get them out of the way. Then we'll take the head bolts out and pull the head. Then I think I can work on the valves without taking all the rest of that stuff out. A half inch breaker bar and a three eighths adapter put on this socket. Start in the middle. Listen these dudes. Brew any self service manual for a head job on a Subaru. That dumb manual will tell you that you gotta replace these bolts every time. I'm here to tell you that manual is wrong. I've never replaced a set of head bolts in a Subaru. I've never had a head gasket failure because of the head bolts. I've never had one break. I've never had nothing happen to a head bolt. Ever. So don't listen to that crap. Just reuse your head bolts on a Subaru. Now, if you take one out and it looks stretched in the middle of it's thin and it looks like it's going to break, okay, don't use it. Get one. Get a used one out of a different Subaru. That's how easy it is to get the head off a Subaru. Now, that's easy. Get y'all where you can see here. Looks like that one valve there on the bottom hit and knocked the, knocked the carbon off. So it's probably bent that valve. It maybe didn't, but I'm saying it probably did. So in that case, I'm going to have to... That dirt, I don't know where that came from. I'll have to get that out of there. Must have fell down in the top when I was taking the intake off. But, uh... Yeah, I believe that valve has hit, so it might have bent it. But I've got valves. I think I got exhaust valves and I got guides and a used head down here so that's no problem but the, i mean real time that was 30 45 minutes that's including me taking the motor uh taking that motor off my stand putting that motor on the stand and taking the timing cover and head off of it, it 35 45 minutes and i mean <coughs> sometimes i make stuff look easy that's not easy but this is easy this is not because I'm making it look easy. This is actually easy. For, for me, it is. For some people, they hate Subarus. But I swear, it's the easiest car you can work on. There's nothing easier to work on. Ever. Everybody's like, I can work on that old shit. No, you can't. You don't know how to time a small box every way. You might think you know. But unless you know, you don't know. Everybody that says that don't know. That's why they take it to the garage and get it fixed. Because they don't know. But these cars are so easy. You don't got to time nothing. Just put it together. You ain't going to get it out of time except the belt. You can't get that belt out of time. It's easy. It ain't nothing like a small block Chevy. As far as the just how easy it is. But pinions are like assholes and I am an asshole. So. Alright, I'm going to take these rockers shafts out. I'm choosing a snap-on... 3H drive 14 volt impact and a 12 millimeter deep well impact socket. But these rocker shafts are really easy. Just pull them out. No big deal. When you put them back, it's really hard to get them mixed up or messed up. All the bolts are pretty much the same on them. Now, if you're doing one of the newer Subarus, it's got that variable valve timing. A lot harder to put these rocker shafts in there's a procedure and i don't know the procedure but i can put them in without messing them up because i've done it so many times but uh if it's newer than if it's a newer car you gotta be careful with that it's the camshaft spinning down in here it's smooth you got no play it's in good good shape everything's good on this thing i really don't even know how this happened this valve here's the one that's the guide's messed up in Oh yeah, I heard it come out. <laughs> that worked like a charm. I couldn't put it back in that way, but I took it out like that. Don't want to lose this thing. I'm going to leave it on that magnet when I get done with it here. So I don't lose it. I just tuck that magnet right there. Stuck his socket over top of it. And pushed it down. Until I heard it click. When it clicked, it was on there. worked
yeah, you can see this goes on the guide, and this was just sitting on the valve. There ain't even no guide sticking up out of the head for this this valve seal to even stick to. Cut my hand. That's pretty normal. All right, Get this valve out of here. And it's bent all to hell. So I'm gonna have to get a valve. It's bent. You can see it. See how bent it is? It hit that piston. That wasn't gonna be no good. Period. So that valve stuck because that guy was pulled out. That valve stuck. And then that piston hit it and it bent. And that's why I started getting a misfire. And it was on a really rainy, cold day. It's kind of weird. Try that. No, maybe it was a seven. Oh yeah, all right. See if we can drive this valve guide out here with this seven millimeter chrome socket. Oh, yeah. All right. Got my valve guide out. See how it's broke on the end right here? Dang thing slid down. Got hot, I guess, and slid down. And then the end of it broke. And then it stuck my valve open. Right here's where your seal goes on. There's like a little groove right here for your seal to go on. So I got to go and get uh, another head that I've got in a vehicle and take the valve guide out of it. And hopefully that hole is all right and I can put it in my head and I'll be all right with a used valve guide. But you can see how hot and brittle that got. That thing shouldn't break like that. Hold on, let me get in view. That thing shouldn't break and be brittle like that on the end. It got so hot it melted it. And that was... <sighs> I'm guessing that was because I had open exhaust on it for a while. But it just finally ended itself. So I got to get a valve and a valve guide. And we'll put it back together. And I'm going to take y'all with me. Have a nice day.